All right, so now we're ready to start using uh, some of these properties we just discussed uh, to actually start solving equations. Um, now, the first um, equation we're going to look at is actually an exponential equation. Uh, so if you remember, the easiest way to solve an exponential equation is to get the basis to be the same um, and then work with the exponents. Now, um, and that can't always be done, and this is an example of just that. So uh, in its exponential form, there's really not a way to get uh, the base is to be the same, so this is where the benefit of uh, using logarithms will come into play. So you have some options here on how you want to move forward. Um, one of the things that I might do is I might just go ahead and rewrite it with the 5 uh, on the other side and move that 2x over to the right. Um, in this case, it's a little more clear um, that you are in this form, uh, base a raised to a variable uh, equals a constant. So uh, once again, if y equals log base a of x and a to the y equals x can use together can be used together, then in the exponential form, this would be my a, this would be my y, and this the x. And by simply rewriting it, we find out that x equals log base 2 of 1 fifth. And if our job was to solve for x from the start, uh, then that's exactly what we've done. Uh, this is called the exact solution. Um, exact means no matter how messy it looks, it's, it's precise, it's exact. Um, you don't need a calculator for it. Uh, this is your final answer no matter how it looks and you're ready to move on to the next. So now we're ready to take advantage of um, a similar property to what we studied with the exponential functions, uh, and that's the one-to-one -one property for logarithmic equations. Uh, so the one-to-one -one property says that if you have log base a of x set equal to log base a of y, if that's the case, then x equals y. Um, and as, as important as it was to understand the details of it uh, with exponential functions, uh, it's equally as important to recognize it here. Um, this property says, in other words, that if you have one single logarithm equals one single logarithm uh, and the bases are the same, then x must equal y. So one single log equals one single log with the same base, then the insides equal each other. So we'll go ahead and take a look at this example, um, which is uh, pretty much set up exactly uh, to take advantage of the, the one-to-one -one property. Uh, you can see we have a natural log of something equals natural log of something else. Um, so it does satisfy the conditions that we have one single log equals one single log, and the bases are the same, and in this case, base E. Um, if this is the case, then just more or less take the inside of negative 2x and set it equal to the inside of x squared minus 24. So now we'll just solve this, this basic quadratic equation. Um, we'll go ahead and move everything around to get zero on one side, uh, which time now uh, we can go ahead and think about how to solve the quadratic. Uh, you always wanna check to see if it factors, and I, and I believe in this case it does. Uh, looks like an x uh, plus six and an x minus four. Uh, you can always double check that by multiplying it together or foiling it. Uh, We'll now take x plus 6 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0. Therefore, x equals negative 6, and x equals 4. Now, um, we know that those are good solutions for the quadratic equation, but that wasn't necessarily the, the equation that we were told to solve. Uh, we were told to solve this one. And if you think back uh, at some of the things we, we talked about and we looked at in graphing logs, um, the domain of a log is... 0, uh, excuse me, is bigger than 0, which means that it has to be positive. So what we have to make sure of is that when we take these answers and we go back in to the original, we have to make sure that the quantities inside these parentheses stay bigger than 0. So for example, if I take a negative 6 and I plug it in here, you would get a positive number, which is good. If I take a negative 6 and plug it into these parentheses, that gives me also another positive number, which is good. So negative 6 works. Now we'll go ahead and we'll take the negative 4, or I'm sorry, excuse me, the positive 4. Notice if I take a positive 4 and I plug it in up here, that's going to give me the log of a negative number. 
And we can't accept that. If you think back to the graph of a log again, you can't have the log of a negative number. It has to always be bigger than zero. So this solution would need to be rejected. So the only answer to this equation, even though we had a quadratic, the only answer that actually works in the original, which we were asked to solve, would be the x equals negative 6.